Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna watch this video called 12 things not to do in Japan. And I think this is gonna be pretty interesting because I'm Japanese and I was born and raised in Japan. And at the same time, I have lived in the Netherlands for eight months in total. And when I was there, I realized there's a lot of rules that's uh, only um, existing only in Japan. So let's jump into it and I'm going to react to it. Ooh. I won't lie, I didn't know a whole lot about Japan before I got here. Uh, I knew what Pikachu was, and I'd seen The Last Samurai about three times, and that was probably the extent of my knowledge. I actually did most of my reading about Japanese etiquette on the horrific 12-hour flight between London and Tokyo, and I've pretty much just winged it ever since. In hindsight, there are a lot of things I know now that I would have done well to comprehend before I got here. Uh, so today, I've taken five years of experience in the field and compiled it into this list of 12 things not to do in Japan. So when you're on your flight here, you needn't worry about reading about cultural etiquette. You can sit back, relax, and enjoy the in-flight entertainment with incredible titles to choose from, such as The Emoji Movie, Valerian and the City of a Thousand Disappointments, Ace Detective Sherlock Bones. And I think we can all agree, of those three movies, the most compelling would have to be Sherlock Bones, Ace, Ace Detective. Uh, especially with that brilliant tagline, the world's first talking police dog on a mission impossible. <laughs> mission Pause impossible. Simple. It doesn't really work, does it? No. At all. So walking down the street whilst eating and drinking isn't illegal. You're not going to get shouted at uh, and you're not going to get arrested by Ace Detective Sherlock Bones. But what you will get is the stare of disapproval. A lot of people don't know this one until you get here and never see anyone doing it. What you'll find is if someone wants to eat or drink something quickly outside, they'll buy it at the convenience store and then eat it or drink it out the front. Same with vending machines. If they buy something from the vending machine, they'll drink it there and then next to the vending machine. The main reason is people are very conscious about keeping the streets clean here and you don't want to ruin someone else's day by having them walk through your spilt coffee. That said, all you need to do to avoid the stare of disapproval is uh, just stop and eat and drink whatever it is there and then. Maybe it's on a bench maybe you're just standing at the side of the road whatever just don't walk whilst eating and drinking and you'll be all right okay it's 80 percent true like i personally don't uh drink or like eat when i'm like when i'm outside and walk in because it's just sort of rude and like you know who wants to see you eating but like i think the tendency is weaker when it comes to drinking like you know drinking coffee or like juice like soda I, we don't care about that, but eating like something when you're walking, like it's not very good. Three things to point out here. Number one, never put your chopsticks upright into the rice, as this is part of a ritual oh, conducted at funerals when offering rice to the spirits of the deceased. Similarly, number two, never pass things uh, from chopstick to chopstick, uh, because again, understand. this is done during funerals uh, to pass the bones of cremated relatives. So that kind of imagery doesn't go down well over dinner, as you'd expect. Probably best not to conjure up imagery surrounding death before before you've even had your lunch. Oh, and thirdly, don't do the rubbing of the chopsticks. You know when you open wooden chopsticks and you like to do that to uh, get rid of the splinters and just because it's, it's fun. It's more like Everyone just doing that, right? But don't do it in Japan because it's seen as rude to the owner because you're basically saying, oh, your chopsticks are probably cheap, uh, which, <laughs> let's face it, they probably are, but in fact, they usually definitely are. Probably the greatest thing about Japan ever, and the reason that I eat out several times a week, just because I save 20% automatically. In Japan, it's believed that customer service should always be exceptional, with staff giving 120% every time. 120%? 110%, 120% would be ridiculous. But it's not necessarily rude to tip someone, it just creates this awkward situation where the worker, the staff would feel like you're assessing their performance and they could potentially lose face. So you might think you're being nice by giving someone a tip, but you're not, you're just creating an uncomfortable situation for the worker and they'll probably just reject your tip outright. Uh, so don't be tempted to do it. Okay, yeah, that's true. Like it's just cultural difference, I think. And the wages, the wages for like part-time job workers, it's 
they're they're not that bad so we don't need tip for that this heavily depends on the occupation that like what kind of job they have when i was working at this uh hotel as an interpreter some people gave me tip and i was like okay thank you i appreciate it but it's not very common it's true There's a real emphasis on being mindful when you're using public transport in Japan uh, that's often completely absent in many countries. Numerous of the times that I've been riding a train in the UK and someone nearby has been screaming at their partner down the phone and I felt like I was part of the argument, like some kind of unpleasant 4D experience. But given Japan's density, it's especially important to be mindful when you're stuffed in a train alongside fellow commuters, many of whom are sleeping as well. With that in mind, don't ever ever talk on your phone on the train, that's a massive like no thing to do here and uh, even talking loudly is looked down upon if you're on a local train or a subway train and you get a phone call just ignore it until you get off and if you're on a bullet train uh, you can go to the little compartment in between the carriages and take your call there I remember for the first few years that I lived here, whenever someone handed me a business card, I was utterly terrified because until then, business cards to me had always just been a bit of paper, a bit of card with some writing on. But in Japan, they are so much more. Once you've exchanged business cards, the trick is to imagine you've just been handed the lost treasure of El Salvador or something. First, study it meticulously, the name, the job position, the details. Uh, and then either put it in your business card holder or just put it on the desk if you're at a business meeting. Just put it on the table. Never play around with business cards or put yeah. them in your back pocket because they're seen as a physical extension of the person themselves. And you don't want to stuff somebody's physical extension down your back pocket. If you're doing business in Japan, always, always carry business cards. You don't want to be that awkward foreigner who stood there writing out their name and number 50 times in one hour on the back of a tissue. And for the record, I am usually that awkward foreigner uh, scribbling down my details because I do guy. forget to bring them. And subsequently, I hate myself when it happens. If you've got a runny nose, standard procedure here is just to keep sniffing or just to find a toilet or a broom cupboard to hide in. Blowing noses in public is pretty rude. Interestingly though, handkerchiefs are pretty popular so. here. Not in the way you would think though. People use them to wipe sweat off in the hot summer weather uh, or even more commonly to dry their hands in public toilets. Because surprisingly, many public toilets in Japan don't have any hand drying facilities despite having space age toilets that reside in the same room. It's quite a weird contrast that I don't quite understand. <laughs> Physical contact in Japan isn't really a thing. You'll bow a lot, you'll nod Not enthusiastically really. daily, uh, but occasionally you might shake hands with someone if they're a good friend or uh, a business client that you get on well with, but generally I avoid it unless someone makes the first move. And hugging in particular doesn't go down well, it's just met with expressions of awkwardness and despair. And also amongst couples, public displays of affection are phenomenally rare here, so uh, don't be surprised if you get the stare of disapproval if you're kissing your partner frantically in the street. And I think it should definitely be this. If you're the sort of person who feels the need to have a debate or an argument about things or throw your opinions out there constantly, people will find you obnoxious and dislikable and uh, probably just avoid you. Embedded heavily within the culture is this idea of keeping harmony um, and avoiding conflict at all costs. And it's a lot easier to do that when people aren't at each other's throats throwing around opinions. Sometimes it can be frustrating when people are just unwilling to speak their minds or give you a clear yes or no I answer. I mean, one time, one of my colleagues when I was teaching, I asked him, do you have any pets? And he said to me, maybe my cat is dead. Maybe your cat is dead. What, what does that mean? It's, is it is dead or is it not dead? It's not Schrodinger's cat, is it? It turned out the cat was definitely dead, but he was just the sort of person that always liked to use the word maybe and just not express certainty. Uh, but if there's one reason I've never seen a fight anywhere in Japan in the last five years, it's probably this reason. That people are a lot more careful about expressing their opinions and holding back what sure. they really think. It's true, like Japanese people tend to hide like 
their emotions are emotions so and it's sort of like a virtue and because of that we tend to care about each other like you know what other people think but at the same time it's pretty irritating and annoying especially when there is some sort of misunderstanding i'm kind of accustomed to this like environment where people say like express their opinion really clearly like you know in the netherlands sometimes i feel like when i'm talking with my japanese friends like you know what's the point yeah, I couldn't be bothered to film Please. that one. Uh, everyone seems Please to know this it. one already anyway. When visiting someone's house or entering a public building like a school or going to a hot spring, you take off your shoes and switch to slippers mm. before you go in. The easiest way of knowing if you have to change your shoes is there'll be a change in elevation in the floor. So when you go in, there'll be a little stair and that's when you know. This is the one thing on the list where failing to stick to the rules will have noticeable results. A few years ago, a friend and I visited a public bathhouse in Kyoto and we went in and you're supposed to take your shoes off. For some reason he didn't, I don't know why, I don't think he noticed or saw. There was a little old woman sitting behind the entrance counter where you kind of pay, and uh, when we walked in, she saw that he still had his shoes on, and she shot up with terrifying energy and ran over and grabbed him and took him to the front and was like, get your shoes off, get your shoes off. And that image has stayed burnt into my mind. This quiet little old woman suddenly becoming so alive and animated by this terrible event. And ever since then, I've never forgotten to uh, take my shoes off when entering a building. Sometimes, yeah, old Japanese ladies are really scary. And especially in Kyoto, they say that like people in Kyoto are sometimes really mean. So those people in Kyoto, Again, they tend to hide their emotions unlike this lady and then like they say something mean, like imply something. They're like, oh, would you like to snack something? But they don't mean it. They don't mean it. What they're implying here is it's almost dinner time, so can you get the fuck out of here? Yeah. For whatever reason, rubbish bins and trash cans are disturbingly rare in Japan. Uh, outside of convenience stores, it can be a nightmare to find one. And the reason I put this on the list is because so many people, uh, so many of you guys, message me on Twitter saying, I'm in Tokyo and I can't find a bin, what should I do? I've wandered through Tokyo for up to 20 minutes sometimes, just in search of a bin and can't find one. The streets though, despite that, are shockingly clean here because people, if they can't find a bin, they just take the rubbish home with them. It can feel like some kind of mini game sometimes, going in search for a bin because when you do find a bin you feel a real sense of achievement but uh, despite that don't be tempted to litter just keep trying and you'll find a bin one day Seems like a fairly obvious addition to the list, and yet in the UK we just cross the street whenever the hell we want, whenever there's an opening <laughs> in traffic, uh, as opposed to waiting that. for the green light. Same as many countries. In Japan, however, people mm. do not cross the road on a red light. It's incredibly rare, and it's one of the greatest ways of seeing this sense of order and obedience to the law that exists in Japan. If you stand yeah, at a roadside in Japan and there's no cars coming, you can't see any cars whatsoever, people still will not cross the road until it goes green. Over the years of the many friends I've had come to visit me here, this is the thing that shocks them the most. The idea of not crossing the street when there's no visible cars there. The idea of abiding by a rule that doesn't seem necessary. And yet for me personally, the main reason I abide by it is after a few years of being here, you don't want to stand out. You don't want to be this stereotypical rule-breaking foreigner. And as well as that, True. you don't want to run the risk of getting caught out by the police. So those are two things worth taking into consideration before you dash across the seemingly empty road. And the last one, don't worry about... So this totally depends on the situation, to be honest, like when there's not many people and the, the cross, crossroad is just, you know, only tiny bit and there's no cars and then sometimes people are like, you know, eh, whatever. But we don't want to be, I, I guess we don't want to be the first penguin, like, you know, because we don't want to be outstanding or like we want to do the same thing. We don't want to catch attention to other, from other people. But when somebody starts like ignoring the red light, some people are like, you know, oh, okay, then I will go, I will go. Not knowing anything about Japanese etiquette when you come to Japan. <laughs>
as I said earlier in this video, there aren't going to be any real consequences to not following any of these things, apart from maybe the footwear one, that's, that's quite scary, you don't want to get dragged off by an old woman. The reason I say don't worry too much is because I find a lot of people come here and they're very nervous and very anxious about following the etiquette, etiquette they don't really comprehend, and that includes even me when I came here, I didn't know anything and I was constantly anxious and nervous that I was making mistakes. But really, as a foreigner in Japan, you get a kind of a, a free pass to make mistakes. Sure. People are understanding and they're kind and they will let you off. So don't become too nervous about following all the rules. Do your best, but don't become a nervous wreck. So those are my 12 things not to do in Japan, but what have I missed out? Let us know in the comments section below. I've probably missed out. Don't ever be late and don't enter a bath or a hot spring without having a shower first. Those are probably the other two key ones that I've missed out. And now they're on the list, so this is actually 14 things not to do in Japan, so uh, bonus, bonus stuff there. It's Christmas, so you get extra, extra content. Happy Christmas. So is this Christmas, the happy new dawn, you and now then did one, but of the area. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> okay, it's over. So he's right, you don't have to worry about too much about Japanese etiquette. We appreciate it that you don't want to be rude to Japanese people, but at the same time, uh, we don't expect too much. Of course, like we know that Japan is a tiny, tiny island in Asia. We know that we have a lot of rules that are not common in other countries. However, what I can say for sure is that Probably that would be better for you if you see how Japanese people react to what you are doing. For example, when you are on a train and then talking too loud, maybe some Japanese people are staring at you, and then you can feel like, you know, oh, maybe this is not acceptable here, and then you should stop it, and then there's no problem. So I just finished watching this video, and I agree with him like 80% or more. So this content is really helpful. Uh, so when you visit Japan, watch this before and then just enjoy yourself. You don't have to care about Japanese etiquette too much, just enjoy and try to communicate with Japanese people more. That'll be fun. So thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions about Japanese cultures, etiquette, etc., you can comment it below. I'm waiting for it. I'm gonna post more videos, so stay tuned. Peace out.